Intermediate Algebra Section 1.2. This deals with operations and properties of real numbers. And the first thing we want to identify is this notation, the absolute value. When you have vertical lines around a number, it's talking about the absolute value. And what it deals with is the distance a value is from 0 on the number line. What we're talking about is distances from 0. And as an example, if we had the absolute value of negative 3 and you looked at a number line, what this symbol here, the vertical lines, is asking is what is the distance is that value from the 0 on the number line, and we would answer 3. If we had the absolute value of a positive number, it's still asking us for the distance that number is on the number line from 0, and the distance is 6. So the absolute value of 6 is 6. Just reviewing some symbols that we use in the math world. If we have this expression, you may see problems that ask you to write the meaning, and where the translation is 6 is greater than negative 8 is the meaning of that symbol, and then they'll ask you whether that's true or false. Anything to the right of a number is greater on the number line, so this would be true. If we have this inequality, we would say the first number is less than or equal to the second number. And when we compare these, negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 9. Negative 5 is to the right of negative 9, making it greater, so this would be a false statement. And if we have an inequality expressed like this, we would say 2 is greater than or equal to 2. Well, 2 isn't greater than 2, but the condition with this straight bar underneath it, the equal to is the case, and so we would answer that this is true. In this section, we also will be simplifying by doing some basic operations. For example, they'll have you add some numbers. When they're different signs, the sign on the result will be positive and take the difference between the two numbers, which is 2. This is positive because 5 is the greater of the 2. If it had been negative 5 plus 3, because the larger looking is negative, our answer would be negative. The difference between these two ends up being 2. If you're adding same sign numbers, add up the absolute values of the numbers and put the sign of the numbers on your answer. Back to our notes sheet, we do have a rule for subtraction. And this is actually what your calculator does when you hit the subtraction. It changes subtraction into addition of the opposite of what you were subtracting. And let's look at a couple examples of subtraction. If you have 5 minus 9, you may be able to answer that because you have dealt with problems like this. Using your calculator obviously should give you a correct answer, but if I use that rule of subtraction, I change my subtraction into addition and put the opposite of that number, now I'm adding different sign numbers. The larger looking is negative, and the difference is 4. If I have 3 minus a minus 5, you may also know that when we have two negatives, we get a positive. But if I use the rule of subtraction just to verify that, you'll see that is the case. The subtraction becomes an addition. The opposite of what I have will be a positive 5. And 3 plus 5, which if I'd taken minus a minus is a plus, I would get an 8 in either case. 
Probably the most common place where I see errors is when your subtraction looks like this. If I use the rule of subtraction, I replace subtraction with addition, the opposite sign of what I have, and I can see I'm adding same sign numbers. I add the numbers up and put the sign of the numbers, so I end up with a negative 8. There will be problems where you're multiplying sign numbers. Anytime you have a positive and a negative, the result will be a negative. The same is true when you're dividing. If I had a negative 15 or a positive, as long as I've got one sign positive, one sign negative, the result will be a negative. If we have same sign, whether it's two negatives or two positives multiplied together, we end up with a positive number. And the same is true with division. If you have a positive divided by a positive, you get a positive. And if you have a negative divided by a negative, you get a positive answer. So you'll see some problems like that. Next, we'll have just a little bit of practice on some exponents. And in this example, it's clear here what is being raised to the second power. This is asking us to take negative 8 times negative 8. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we end up with a positive 64. Here, what isn't as obvious, and our eye tends to think that these are the same, but in reality on this example, this is shorthand for negative 1 times 8 to the second power. If they had wanted negative 8 raised to the second power, it would have been in parentheses. So here, the only thing that's being raised to the power, and if we follow our order of operations, we simplify exponents first. So we'll take 8 to the second power. 8 times 8 is 64. And then multiply it by the negative 1 to give us a negative 64. Be sure when you're simplifying examples that you ask yourself, when there's an exponent, what is being raised to the power so that you can avoid this common mistake shown here on these problems. You will have numerical expressions in this section as well that you'll need to follow your order of operations to simplify. And let's look at one. This actually has a grouping symbol in it where this is the fraction bar. And before we can do the division, we have to simplify the numerator and simplify the denominator. If we look at the numerator, we have a power that would have the priority, then multiplication, and finally we'll add. In the denominator, we have parentheses that need to be simplified, and then the indicated multiplication. So in the numerator, negative 5 times negative 5 would give us a 25. 8 times 3 is 24. We are going to add 3 plus 25 is 28. We have a 28 plus 24 in the numerator then. In the denominator, 6 minus 5 is 1 and 1 times 4 is 4. Simplifying this further, we'll add the 8 and 4 is 12. Carry the 1 is 52 over 4. And then a matter of reducing it. If we want to leave it as an improper fraction, we can. There is um, 4 common to both the numerator and the denominator. And here's our case where we're treating this fraction bar as our grouping symbol, simplifying above and below. 4 goes into 5 once, 4 goes into 12 three times. So our final answer is 13. Next, we'll look at some laws in this section as well. And the first law is the law of reciprocals. And it states for any two numbers, a and 1 over a, when you multiply them together, the result is 1. 
And an example might be if I had 8 sevenths, what is its reciprocal? I believe the reciprocal is 7 eighths. And the test would be when you multiply those two values together, do you get 1? You would have either a 56 over 56, or if you cancel out common factors, we end up with 1 as well. If we have a negative number, which <clears throat> is definitely allowed, the reciprocal is switching the places of the numerator and the denominator. So we would have an 8 over negative 1. A negative times a negative is positive. We'd have 8 over 8, and we end up with our positive 1. Another one of our laws that we are identifying in this section is the commutative law, and that's stated next. For any real numbers, a plus b equals b plus a. Order is just turned around, and it also holds for multiplication, a times b equals b times a. The next one, for any real numbers, a, b, and c, a plus the quantity b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c. The order stayed the same, but the grouping symbols change. This is the associative law, and it holds true for multiplication. And the last one is the distributive law. And it states that if you have a times the quantity b plus c, you can distribute that multiplication across the addition or subtraction for that matter. These laws are here to help us simplify expressions. And let's take a look at some examples that justify these statements. And here what we have is this first one, we have a negative 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus negative 5. There's only two numbers here, and their order change. This is an example of the commutative. law or property. In the next one, what law justifies that these two things are equal? We have the quantity with a priority adding first 5 plus 2 and then add 4. And in the second one, they're asking us to add 2 plus 4 first with the parentheses and then adding it to 5. If you notice, the order stayed the same, but the grouping or the association changed. This is an example of the associative law that allows us to have an equivalent statement. In the next one, we have parentheses involved. On the left, we're multiplying 4 and 2 first, and then by negative 5. And on the right-hand side, negative 5 and 4 first, and then by 2. The order is the same on left and right side of this equation but the grouping or association is what has changed. So ditto for C. And on D, we have 4 times 3 is the same as 3 times 4. That is the commutative property again, which holds true for multiplication as well as the addition that we had in A. The next example asks us to write an equivalent expression using the distributive law. So they're asking us to take this quantity out here and multiply it by each of the terms inside the parentheses. So I'm going to write it all out to start with. We have 2k, negative 2k times 4x minus negative 2k times the second term, 5y, plus negative 2k times z. And then we'll go and simplify by multiplying similar terms together. We have a negative times a positive, which is negative. Rearranging using commutative property, I'm going to multiply the numbers together. 2 times 4 is 8. And kx, I can't do anything with. We have a negative times a negative times a positive is a positive. 
commutative property, we would switch this order around to have the numbers next to one another. 2 times 5 can be simplified with a 10. And then we have the ky. And finally, plus a negative times a positive is going to be a negative. And not much that we can do as far as simplifying this. Now, someone else might have said that they wrote a minus 2kz that is the same as plus a negative 2kz if we use the rule of subtraction. The last example for section 1.2 I want to go over is here. It's asking us to find an equivalent expression by factoring. This essentially is going from this direction to the left using the distributive property. Every one of these values that I just got done with each have a factor of negative 2k because it was distributed through multiplication over the quantity that was in the parentheses. We're undoing that distributive, and the fancy name is factoring, which ultimately is dividing. If you look at these three terms, the greatest common factor is 7. So I'm going to undo that distributive, essentially factoring by dividing by 7. I indicate what I divided out. 14 divided by 7 leaves a 2 and the k. 49 divided by 7 leaves a 7 with the m. And the 7 over 7 doesn't disappear, but anytime we have the same number over the same number, we have 1, so we have a minus 1. We can verify that this is correct by doing the distributive back the other direction. 7 times 2k is 14k, 7 times 7m is 49, and 7 times negative 1 is negative 7.